Okay, now I want to go over plates and base plates. Um, these two were used a lot in varying ways. Obviously, there's lots of different configurations for them. Um, starting with plate. Plate is kind of your catch-all tool for plates. When you just need a generic plate of varying <clears throat> um, dimensions or shapes or whatever, <coughs> excuse me, uh, a plate is kind of where it's at. So let's just start with something kind of basic, like, you know, we'll do a rectangle. We'll make that rectangle, I don't know, uh, 12 inches by 6 inches. And we use that as the basis for making a plate. So we come in here, we click the plate tool, and we're going to select our, our, our data file. There's different types of data files you can create that are custom, but the default is structural plate. And you're going to want to pick your thickness. So we'll say a half inch plate. None of this stuff has to be filled out, really. Um, and you can either choose to pick points or select lines. Well, we drew a rectangle as our template, so we're just going to choose select lines. It's going to ask you if you want to extrude it in a positive or negative direction. We're going to go positive, which basically means it's going to go positive z-axis versus negative z-axis. So positive makes it go up, and there's our plate. And our, our polyline is still left behind, so keep that in mind. If you're looking to clean up your drawings, um, you can always just select everything and then deselect your plate and erase your polyline behind. If we were to have done the pick points, you could just randomly pick points like this and uh, finish the plate out by right clicking and then same thing, make a custom plate. You can also do uh, custom shapes. So um, let's say you're doing something like, um, I don't know, a shear tab or something. I'm just gonna draw something real quick, real fast. Um, let's just say like three inches and then we come down half an inch. Oops. Did it not? There we go. And then another three inches, and then six, and then three, and then, I don't know, four, or something like that. That's good enough. Okay. And then we'll do a, a fillet on the interiors, like you'd see a, a full depth stiffener plate, right? And then we can come here and do a plate tool with a half inch thickness and say, uh, pick the polyline and then uh, do a positive extrusion and there it is there's my there's my plate now this as far as plates go they're basically the same thing as doing an, an extrusion there's two main differences when you do an extrusion of a polyline and I extrude this half an inch the first thing you notice is that the, is that the original polyline template is gone <clears throat> the second thing you notice is that this is still a CADWorks object, whereas this is just a solid. If I double click this, I get the quick properties menu come up here and whatnot. If I double click this, I still get to go back to the component edit uh, dialog box for plates and choose a different thickness should I choose so. Now granted, I can do that here by going into the properties menu and changing the extrusion height from half inch to three eighths, same principle. The other main difference is uh, mousing over this allows me to see the tooltip indicating indicating that it is a CADWorks object. I can also easily restretch this. Say I want to shorten this up by an inch, I just shorten that up by an inch. Bring it down six inches, it moves out six inches. Uh, I put 66 inches. There we go. To do the same thing with this is, is similar. As long as you have made any other modifications, you can do you know similar things by by grabbing the uh, the tool and moving out a corner of sorts. Oh, this one doesn't want to play right. Maybe the top will. Yeah, the top will move out. So you can move the top out. I don't know why the bottom only wants to move one side, but it is what it is. Anyways, you get the you get the gist of it. So it kind of works like an extr like an extrusion. And for this reason, I don't actually do plates a lot. <clears throat> and for this reason I don't do plates a lot um, well actually also because of the way that they show up in, in the single line uh, tool so but if you do need to draw plates um, you can do it this way you can do extrusions these are both kind of interchangeable I got to be really honest with you uh, from a from a modeling drafting perspective they're pretty interchangeable but if you wanted to use make your own plates that's how you make them but as far as end plates and base plates, that's why I recommend the base plate tool. So we are going to make a base plate. Selecting the base plate icon here, there's a, there's, there's a few more options you have on your standard plate. 
So we start with the thickness of the plate. We're going to say three quarter in this in this uh, case. And let's say we're doing a base plate for a W6. Okay. Uh, we'll leave with the length and width of one foot. Um, you can choose the rotation of the plate. Um, you can choose the X and Y offset, which is basically your plates are always, their insertion point is always at the center, but you can choose to have them offset from the X or Y axis should you need that. But don't think it's really all that important. Um, you can, uh, and then you have your holes. You can turn the holes on or off. Um, you can choose the rows and columns. We're going to have two rows, two columns, so that we get four bolts total. I'm going to leave it with a diameter of one inch for the hole. You can choose to have a slotted length. If you're making a, if you're making an end plate and it's got slots on it, you can choose slotted length for your holes. Uh, this is the row spacing between bolts. This is not the distance from the center line of your plate to your bolt. And I've seen a lot of uh, base plate details where the bolts are measured to the center line of the column. This is not that. This is the distance between the two bolts. So if if I if I want uh, for a W6, I'm going to use a nine-inch spacing on in both directions. We also have rotation and XY offset. This is for the bolts specifically. You can rotate them within the plate uh, or offset them within the plate. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, more over the X and Y offset. So let's say um, we pick a point here, and my base plate is put here. When would you use an X and Y offset for your bolts? Well. I've seen base plates for metal buildings that don't have the plates centered. Um, sorry, don't don't have the bolts centered for various reasons. Maybe the bolts are offset. So let's say that this is actually a uh, and it's important to note too, real quick, that when when examining your length and width, the length is is your y axis dimension and the, and the width is your x axis dimension. So let's say I want to make this skinnier. I want to adjust the the x-axis dimension, which is my width. So I'm going to adjust this down to about 8 inches. But because I do that, uh, it alerts me that I need to increase my plate dimensions or decrease my uh, hold dimensions. Well, because I went down to 8 inches, it's now shorter or thinner than the, the column spacing. Again, column spacing being in my uh, x-axis. So I need to reduce my column spacing, which I was going to reduce all of these anyways. So let's say I, I, I change all of these to uh, 5 and 5. Hit OK. All right. Actually, we'll do 4 and 4. All right. Now, let's say in this particular instance, I need to offset these bolts a little bit further to one side because that's the way that it's or it orients itself with the column. What you can do is choose your X or Y offset. So in this case, I'm going to say an offset of minus one. That's going to bring me south one inch. And it just moves all the bolts together. Also, if you see lines like this, you, most companies don't have this turned on. I haven't done the settings yet. If you happen to see lines on your cylinders, to, to, uh, the variable for that is ISO lines. Turn it to zero. When you regenerate, you'll see that it's missing the sides. Change your variable D-I-S-P-S-I-L-H, display silhouette to one, then regenerate, and you'll get kind of your standard looking cylinders. All right, so that's your uh, X and Y offset for your bolts. And that's how to make a base plate generally. Now, one thing that's special about base plates is that let's say I put in that 615 uh, as a column though, okay? And uh, I got it center and center. I'm going to select my line. When you insert a base plate, because with a base plate, you pick a point, right? It also remembers my settings from the last time I inserted a base plate. Let's say I'm using a three quarter base plate, one foot by one foot, two rows, two columns, one inch diameter uh, bolt hole, and uh, nine inch spacing on the bolts. I'm going to pick a point. What you can do is place it at the bottom of the column right on the center line. If you insert a base plate on the end of a center line, this happens for for um, end plates on beams, if you're, if you're doing end plates on beams. What it will do is cope, meaning cut back the, actually it's not even coping uh, as far as AutoCAD is concerned, it's cutting back the column one inch. So if I place this, in fact, I'm going to put a, a line here so you can see that, that the, the beam is no longer going to be attached to this line. So I'm going to insert this plate, 
choose my three quarter. All my settings are still there. And we're going to say pick point. I'm going to pick a point. And see what it's done now is it hasn't even just coped it. It's cut the beam back so that it's sitting on top of this plate, whatever that thickness may be. Now, it only does it once. Should you go and change this to something like a half inch, it's not going to bring your beam back down with it. You're going to have a gap. You're going to have to extend that down to match the top of this. <laughs> It only does it when you insert a plate for the first time. If you insert the plate on a part of the solid, like maybe the edge, it will not cut that beam back. It only does it when you insert it for the first time. It will do this for, it will do this for every column that you insert a base plate to. So just wanted to keep that in mind. Again, I'll do real quick the same thing for beams. So let's just turn this thing sideways. I'm just going to use the same plate and beam just to uh, just for for the principle of it all. Uh, well, no, not really. I can't. So we're going to go top and top. And we're going to pick points. Okay, here's our W6. Now, when you place the plate, you have to change your UCS on a beam because you're changing your orientation. If you don't, and I'm going to show you, where's uh where's that plate go? Oh, too high. If you don't, here's my three-quarter plate. I'm going to pick a point. If you don't change your UCS, notice I'm using the world UCS. It's just going to put it same orientation. Okay. What we want to do is first change the UCS, in this case the front. And then uh, set that plate size. And we'll do something more realistic for this one. Let's do... Uh, half inch still want my length my y-axis to be one foot I want my width to be seven inches and let's say we're attaching this to another 615 so I'm gonna have my column spacing at three and a half inches my row spacing still nine inches okay my diameter for my holes now because I'm gonna go steel to steel will be 13 sixteenths now I've got a more realistic end plate if I place this anywhere on the solid, no cope will occur, no cutback. If I place it directly on the center line, I get a cutback. You can see now it's lined up on the end as my, as my cutback. At this point, all I have to do now is move it down the three inches to make it centered. And there's my end plate. Okay. If I decided not to place it there, if I decided to place it at the actual center, so let's go back and put that half inch plate in. I'll do a mid between two points since there's no actual in, uh, line to snap to. You can see that that beam did not cut back and now we're overlapping. So just something to keep in mind. If you want that cut back, you have to place it on, actually on the uh, center line of the, of the beam or the column, whatever you're attaching to. That sums up uh, base plates and plates. Um, use them however you will. Um, they they do show up in, in single line steel, and I'm going to go over how they're displayed in single line steel whenever I get into that section. But uh, you know you can use these as needed. Um, just a little extra tip when you're doing end plates, plates like this, plates with uh, four bolts evenly spaced outside or inside the the flanges. Um, when they're evenly spaced, that's great. They work fine. Whenever you have a beam such as uh, uh, let's say, uh, where, are my, where are my eights at? So you got an 831 moment connection. Okay. We have a different size beam now. Okay. But we're doing moment connection, so we're going to do eight bolts. Well, let's say I change my height to uh, 14 inches, my width to 9 inches, and my row spacing to 11, and my column spacing to um, 5.5 which is the gauge that we'd probably be attaching to. All right, there we go. We can do this, and I'm going to move this down to, to uh, and this one's not actually cut back. Again, not cut back. So what I'm going to do is make it actually just make a new one real quick. Where's that half inch, 14, uh, 9 inches wide, and then uh, row spacing 11 and 5 and a half. Pick my point, insert, it gets cut back. I move it down four inches. Okay, now I have a, we have a plate, right? But we still need the, the, the interior bolts. Um, 
if your engineer or your company standard dictates that you can use four evenly spaced rows, then so be it, do that. But I doubt they're gonna be four evenly spaced rows because the dimensions wouldn't work out properly. Um, if I took, and my, remember, this is bolt to bolt. The, these, like the row spacing is bolt to bolt. So this is 11. If I have four bolts, I have three, like three sections. So what I would have to do is take 11 divided by three. So 11 inches divided by three is three and 11 sixteenths. That's my bolt to pull, my bolt to bolt. So I would say four rows and I would, and see it tells me it's too long now because I need to three and 11 sixteenths of an inch of an inch. That's my bolt to bolt spacing. And now we have evenly spaced bolts. And what's our distance here? One and three quarters. So that actually works out well. In this particular case, um, when you get to a larger size, like 10, 12, and 14s, um, your engineer may not want you to do evenly spaced. They typically tend to like the bolts to be placed near the flange. In that case, you wouldn't be able to do this. And I, I really need an example to show this. So we're going to do something like a 1240. And we'll do another half inch. And uh, let's do 18. And I think 1240's got an eight inch flange, so nine inches will work. And everything else looks okay. I think we're gonna do um, 15 on the bolts, and five and a half spacing. Okay, let's try this. Move it down six inches, and there we go. So now, if I were to do the same thing here, the 15 inches divided by three, that's a, that's a, that's a five inch spacing. So I'm gonna change this to five inch spacing and go four, uh, four rows. Evenly spaced, but engineering may determine that this distance is too far from the flange at three inches. They're going to want to move it closer. There's not a way in the base plate tool to move these bolts closer. Instead, what you're going to have to do is uh, use just the two rows at 15 inches and manually draw cylinders in these spots and subtract them. And I will get into subtraction and bolt subtraction later on, but it essentially works like this. Um, you create your extrusions for your bolts. You move them to where they need to be. So let's say we want to move them up inside of here and then move them up again another two and a half inches or so maybe. At that point, you can do a subtraction and they become part of it. But make modifications to this plate and those bolts, the bolt subtractions will be gone. So uh, again, I'll get into that later on, but just something to keep in mind when you're doing moment connection in plates like this where you don't have even spacing. And I think that's it for the uh, for the uh, plates.